Hare Krishna. Even when the enemy is out there, the bigger enemy is in here. Even when the enemy is out there, it's often when, when we are striving uh, for attaining success in our life and when we face some problems because of some people, we may say, oh, there is a there's this problem there, there is this, this person is causing so much trouble for me, this person is my enemy. So now it may be true that this person is my enemy. So even when the enemy is out there, we know that the Bhagavad Gita is spoken at the start of a battle. And at the, just when the battle was about to start, Arjuna was in the war field and he was in between the two armies. And while he was between the two armies, at that time, uh, Krishna spoke this message of the Gita. And even at that time, actually, normally, if say a commander and his, if a, if a general and his friend and his charioteer or his friend, they are discussing, at that time, they would be all discussing about, oh, this enemy is like this and this enemy needs to be attacked like this, this enemy may attack like this. They would basically be discussing war strategies. But we see the Bhagavad Gita is spoken just before a war, in the middle of the war, in the middle of uh, the armies, but it doesn't talk about war strategy at all. In fact, it doesn't even talk about war enemies, the enemies that are there in the war. Uh, when at one particular point in 3.37 in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna tells Arjuna, Shri Bhagavan Vacha, Kamesha Krodesha Rajoguna Samud Bhavaha Mahashano Maha Papma Vithyena Mihavairinam. So he says Kamesha Krodesha. It is last only o Arjuna Krodesha Kamesha Krodesha Rajoguna Samud Bhava. This is last which arises from Rajoguna Mahashano Maha Papma. Mahashano, it's it's extreme, it, it is voracious, Mahapapma. It impels one to terribly sinful activities. Vidyanam irinam. Know this to be your enemy. In here, this is your enemy. So normally, you know, if say uh, if there's a charioteer and a warrior, the chariot may point out, hey, see here, that is your enemy, that is your enemy, that is your enemy. So Krishna might have told Arjuna, oh, see there Karna, that is your enemy. See there Adurudhan, that is your enemy. But Krishna is telling Vidya, in a, Vidya, in a, in a, in a, that Vidya, know him to know it, know this to be your enemy. And he says, what is the enemy? Lust. Lust and anger. These are your enemies, Krishna says. So the Bhagavad Gita is not simply a... Uh, uh, war fought over fought because of a property dispute. The Bhagavad Gita, the essential message is about fighting the inner war. And even when dangerous enemies are present out there, Krishna tells Arjuna to remember that his enemies are in here. The enemies inside of selfishness, they are our bigger enemies. And yes, sometimes we may have to fight wars against other people also, but we have to understand that they are also souls like us. And at their core, they are also pure. But they have lost the war against their inner enemies. And their inner enemies have conquered them. And thus they have become uh, agents of that inner enemy now. Instead of becoming opponents of the inner enemy, they have become agents for the inner enemy. And thus we need to fight against them. But So even when we are fighting against people, we are actually fighting against the inner enemies inside them. So it is Arjuna, Krishna tells Arjuna that you have to fight against lust and anger and even when you fight against the Kauravas, actually you are fighting against the lust and anger that has hijacked their pure souls. So in this world, in this world our enemy is not one, this particular person, that particular person. It is ultimately the anarthas of selfish desire which manifests as lust and anger. So by remembering that we ourselves we may sometimes look at other people and we see them behave in terrible ways and we think, who can behave like this? I will never behave like this. And that is true. We may think that I will never behave like this, but we need to know that the same force that is making them act in that way, that same force is there within our hearts also. Yes, we may have it under greater control, but if we lower our guard and that force takes control, that force can make us also act in shocking ways. So we shouldn't be complacent or self-congratulatory, nor should we be condescending uh, towards others. 
we need to know that even when we are fighting against someone actually those whom we are fighting against we are we are they are also on our uh, they are also uh, we are with them also we are fighting against the same inner enemy and in this way we can keep we can keep perspective and make sure that our outer battles i uh, don't become vengeful personal and make us lose our spiritual awareness but we stay spiritually focused spiritually aware and move onwards in our spiritual journey by staying focused on the inner battle which is the bigger battle which is going to have bigger consequences whether we win the outer battle or not yes it will affect our fate in this world in this life but soon this life is going to be over if we win the inner war then we attain eternal happiness and certainly if we can we can we can and should try to win our outer wars also but much more important is to focus on the inner war and to win the inner war and uh, it even if we win the outer war if you not the one the inner war if you are still calm, still overpowered by selfish desires such as lust then we will not be satisfied it is only when we win the inner war that we will become truly satisfied thank you hare krishna